First time here, key, mic. All right, awesome. Let's get on with the presentation, all right? <clears throat> all right, so first of all, I'm gonna go pretty quick. Uh, welcome to Trading Mission. Um, trading Mission is a byproduct of Omega Plus Trading LLC, and we are going to show you today how to increase your trading winning consistency by applying our a highly accurate award-winning daily market analysis. We focus on uh, analyzing the market in a very, very unique way. We've been doing so for well over 15 years now, professionally and for private invest investors. And uh, four years ago, we opened up the Warson Trade Mission, and uh, we haven't looked back since then. So probably going to we, we're probably going to help you uh, take your trading to the next level. You're going to see it in on a step by step format. We've been averaging about 10% ROI average per month, a little, bit, a little bit over close to four years now. And it will help you avoid the most common problem with traders worldwide, which is paralysis analysis. This is just uh, based on you know us traders trying to get the extra edge in our trading by applying or using a lot of indicators, a lot of you know studies or techniques. And it's just normal, we understand that. But today, hopefully, we're going to be able to simplify a format where it doesn't matter what you use, you can stay and still use your techniques or strategies. It's just that we're going to clarify how to use them by selecting the right trend and objectives or targets, either up or down uh, or stay out. You're going to see it in a moment. All right. So a little bit of housekeeping. You got to go to uh, the men's room, a ladies' room, just a moment. No cell phones, please. <clears throat> Other than the fact that obviously you work with it. Um, that way you don't lose about the analysis part of things. Um, and <coughs> excuse me, I'm a little sick, so apologize for that. A little warning is that um, if you're here for the first time, if you are a beginner or inexperienced trader, trader, never traded before, can't tolerate risk, don't have full risk capital. If you're looking for the holy grail in trading, we're not miracle traders. We're definitely going to be able to help you. But, um, you know, we're not foolproof of losses, just so you know. If you don't have a clear chart plan in place, we can help you with that. But you should get one which turns you into a very disciplined trader. If you don't, you're not disciplined um, in your trading, understanding when to sit on the sidelines and try to, um, if, if you try to tend to force a trade every single time because you you have the fear of loss of an opportunity, then uh, you should stop for a moment and uh, create a plan of action and follow through. It doesn't matter which style of trading or technique you use. If you can't afford to lose money, may, then trading as a whole uh, idea might not be for you at this point, right? So these are the little warnings that I want to make sure everybody's ag agreed at this point and understand that there is a lot of money to be made and to lose on trading. Um, everybody agree with this? Press number eight. <clears throat> and everybody understand we're adults, obviously, here. But I just want to make sure that I keep everybody on the safe side. All right, so I got disconnected again. I'm on the yeah, third, no, no, third, third slide. Yep. Okay, yeah, I have a move it there. I just, I just only show two, two screens at this point. All right, <clears throat> thank you very much, everybody. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so this is a you know third screen. All right, so let's just continue on. Um, all right, here's what you can expect. There, you can have you have access to our community base area. And this is an idea of how it looks. And you can share positive outcomes and negative outcomes, but not in a um, not, not in a critical format. That's all we ask for. Remember, trading is, is an amazing opportunity, uh, wins and losses. But we, we do not like to share the negative out, uh, outlook or try to point fingers immediately because that's not the community is the reason why we're being able to sustain ourselves in a very uh, positive manner with lots dozens and dozens of, of clients for four years straight 
because we focus on the positive sides of trading. Negative is there. That's what I said earlier before. If you do not, or if you encounter any one of these um, <clears throat> situations, right, then trading might not be for you. But if you're okay with it, right, then the outcome is going to be even better. We're going to win. We're going to lose sometimes, but you can share them here. And this is the community base that you're going to have access 24 seven. If indeed you become a member, if not still for the next few days, you're going to have access to everybody here is a really nice community slash family where we work as a team. Okay. And you can see the difference of a potential outlooks as an example in this slide right here, you can see some, some people made 10, five takes 14, right? <clears throat> it's kind of an average, right? And, and everybody share if they're in real or simulation account. I really, really, really suggest if you're here for the first time, don't follow us on your real account, please save your money. doesn't matter if we win or lose. Uh, the idea is to understand what, how we work and how we can benefit based on the information we're going to provide. You can see here how many, uh, some people made 22 while others made only 10 ticks and then 20, uh, 28. So it's, it varies depending on the type of trader that you are. Here's for example, Jorge who made 25 then lost 26 and made 20 back while other people just took stood the you know the the, the whole um, day and made 50 in this case you see so once again it's it, it varies because everybody has a different mentality mentality um, mindset and style of trading you you in here you're going to bring your style and we're hope hopefully we're going to enhance it and take it to the next level which most likely is what we have experienced for the uh, thousands of traders that has come through us and hundreds of clients that being through through us and definitely each and every one of them enhance their trading for the better okay so we're not a fly-by-night uh service uh, we've been as an example you see tom that says we've been following you for almost six months now and the wind just keep coming in for example here lee says i discovered your trader about a year ago had four great profitable months got distracted blow my account and I'm back as a member. So in other words, we're being here for a while. Um, I've been here uh, for over a month, very happy. Uh, consider myself very fortunate. These are the comments of people that are being on and off and eventually they uh, um, they st stood the tests of time and st stood with us and probably went off and then came back up. So that's it on this part. Right, so we opened doors in 2014. My name is Carlos on the right side of Mr. Juan my best student now colleague, and sometimes our clients refer to us as the dream team, and you're gonna witness the reason for it. And it's because I'm in charge of short-term bias, price tick-by-tick -tick analysis, while one focus on the big time frame and swing trading side of things. So uh, that way I don't need to uh, uh, shift my attention to the big time frames, while it, because I know Juan is just gonna spot me on the right direction and confirming that everything's still intact because we're kind of swing trader it's just that i'm trying to adapt myself or our style into day trading by the combination of those is um what we try to uh, focus our uh, efforts every time that we try to run uh or execute a trade for uh for each each and every day okay so just to let you know if we're qualified or not i i started teaching in 1998 there is a group of stockbrokers in Puerto Rico in Santander Security Bank. And then from there, uh, we're spread out in 2001. I was hired to work as the main head analyst for the big S&P futures floor on a small fund in Florida. <clears throat> so I've been, I've been around teaching and uh, working the markets as a as the main analyst. So that's what I wanted to share with you. So I've been around for quite a while. And in 2015, after opening up Trade Mission, we were uh, awarded with the uh, uh, Trade Titans Award by Dr. Dean Hensley, based on truthfulness, transparency, and profitability. As of up to, up to this year, um, we are uh, definitely, you know, still on the track as become, you know, being one of the few of, out of thousands of uh, trade room or uh, analysis room that are still being out there. 
this is how it's going to work. We're going to give you a pre-market analysis with a potential main trend. We're going to provide you with potential objective or trade or targets to the upside and downside. And if we see it fit based on our own personal uh, way of trading, right, and, or, and, or our own strategy, we're going to take some trades live. But this is absolutely based on our personal uh, profile of way of trade, you know, of trading. Please do not engage and do not follow us because uh, maybe if you if you're here for the first time, you don't know what the style of trading that we have. We tend to we I tend to go for swing trading, and more often than not, in you know the results are quite different. But in the long haul, right, we trade for the long period of of the session but in the short period of time might not be the stri the right strategy for you, okay? Now, sounds good? Is everybody clear on that? <clears throat> All right, so please just follow along as a reference, but place your own trades based on your methodology and your style of trading. So basically you're gonna have two opportunities, one of two, either buy or sell, or probably even do nothing and we're definitely going to provide you the trend or direction that you should be able to focus. So it's going to look something like this. You have access as it, at this point, you have access to uh, the daily level analysis, which is on if you're here on Chatsy that you should have gained access today on Chatsy. You just click on the top side of Chatsy. It will open up these screenshots that we took, uh, you know, uh, today. And we spent over 40 minutes on each one of those, try to acquire uh, a couple of uh, the levels and I mean the specific levels for a couple, the couple of the markets that we analyze. So you just click on it. It will be it will open up the screenshot separately. You can right click and save uh, save the image as or download it or and you can just then translate the levels right that we just gave you to your own trading platform. And you can do that for the MQ, ES, YM, Gold and um, obviously the crude oil, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. So here's how it works. You see the shaded area in the middle? That's what we call the no trade zone or unbiased zone, choppy zone, whatever you wanna call it. Basically what it means for everybody and for your reference is the fact that on this ledger or the bottom side of things, we should encounter a lot of buying pressure, right? Based on price history. On the top side of things, you should encounter a lot of selling pressure based on the price history. It's tend to say that if the market breaks above it and close above it, it will have a higher percentage of probability of reaching the top levels or zones that we identify for you. In other words, it's gonna, the trend is gonna sustain to the upside. In, in, that, that's the idea. And if it does, these are the potential levels most likely being drawn towards to based on floating orders and anyway analysis and all, a whole lot of other stuff. The same, the same thing will apply on the downside, okay? <clears throat> so that, that basically this is what the levels in, in, in are, uh, I, it means for you. So you're going to have this region as a choppy bias zone. As the market stays within it, it will have a high probability of having a lot of pressure against the actual uh, prevailing trend. If the market is coming to the downside here, <clears throat> it will encounter some buying pressure on the way down and vice versa. Okay, hope well, that kind of clarifies things. We have another tools here that these are based based on price action readings and is subdivided in long time, long long term on the right side very short term on the left side it's an average of uh, multiple time frames on the left side an average of multiple high time frames on the right side okay so we want to make sure that we, we 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 focus at least at least the way that i like it is on the right side right that doesn't mean that it's set in stone but it means that if this is in balance, it will have a highest probability of continuing on the way down and will have a higher probability of this levels to be hit on the way down. That's as simple as it is. OK. All right. So basically, you will get a daily roadmap just like that. And the objective is for you to apply your own strategies 
to our analysis, okay? Once you understand how, to, how we work, you'll have the competitive advantage against 80% of other traders, right? It, everything is based on price structure and price action analysis, nothing else. And for the very first time in this month, um, in four straight years, we're going to share our secret guard competitive advantage tool that it has helped us being on top of the 80% of traders out there that have no clue the main trend of the market is our exclusive proprietary momentum bias software. And you're going to be able to access that as you remain a member. We're testing the grounds this month and see how that works. And so far, if anybody here cared to shine in on Chatsy, guys, uh, I'd rather this to come from you than from us. Uh, any any other members that last week since we introduced this, can you shine in and let us know if this has been an advantage tool or not and how it had help, helped you so far? And I'm putting myself on the line here, but, you know, I like the consensus to be more uh, the reason why, right? Things happen then and then it, no, it doesn't. All right. So so that's basically what it is. Let's just get on with this. <clears throat> And start with the analysis okay first of all um does anybody see the screens yes <clears throat> no i apologize for my voice again All right, awesome. Thank you, Kevin. All right, great. So I'll go over uh, <clears throat> today's analysis in a nutshell, and then uh, I will try to shine in. And explain as we go. I'm going to start with the E-mini S&P. The E-mini S&P obviously is in a huge uh, corrective mode. Um, I'm going to go into uh, two time frames higher. <clears throat> and this is what, where we're at right now on the S&P. So basically, here's an important high, an important low that I understand as a double bottom formation. So this is a huge sideway turning into a nightmare a little bit for the indices uh, as we speak, at least on the E-mini S&P. So the main trend obviously has been downwards. It's been trying to correct as much as we can, as it, it can, um, leaving behind kind of a head and shoulder in the middle of the last week, retesting the prior low with a huge failure to doing so. So a lot of buyers stepping in. So momentum, as we know, it's controlled by buyers. Long-term perspective is trying to push things higher and they are definitely trying at their best to make sure that the market can recover from the huge um, drops that they have done in the recent week. <clears throat> Price action structure, obviously, it's on the big time frame is bearish for me with a very initial uh, intent of a failure of making new lows, turning this into an unbiased market. Long term perspective, big time frames, the way that I'm showing you here. It's bearish. It's clearly as the market is on a huge bearish outlook. And on the last week or so, they try to continue the bearish, but then a huge amount of buyers stepped in, in are trying to protect that bearish market to continue. Um, so at this point, I will say that the market is completely unbiased, but on the longer period of time, it is, it is not until they break that 27.29 that it was still on a huge bearish market, okay? So from now on, <clears throat> the way I see it is I will rather, I will consider becoming a seller more than a buyer unless we break the prior swing high of the 26 to 27 area. And from that point on, then I will understand that they, they will most likely are gonna create a bigger pullback. And we got levels all the way up, but right now on the short term, uh, period of time it for my my personal um, opinion is a little bit more inclining to the unbiased tendency than um, a clear one 
As a day trader, I like to look for the last at least two to three consecutive days to make some uh, rational on the market. And the important high is this one. The important low is this one. Here is an in-between swings. And we can count this on Eddy wave patterns as an Eddy wave one, two, three. This is a little bit awkward, but this is the fourth and the fifth wave down making a lot of sense for the market to start coming up into a little bit of a bigger corrective mode. Understood. So if I, ident if I identify some f already a pattern, then I can, you know, assess that based on the short period of time, even though that on the bigger picture for me, I'm a long-term perspective bearish trader. I have to accept that these guys are definitely committed into a bigger correction on that big swing down on daily charge or weekly charge. Does that make sense? So this means that even though that I'm big time, uh, long-term perspective bearish, I have to accept the fact that the market is, as we speak, on a corrective mode, okay? So the next, the next assessment based on the price action is identify this is a strong support Ray, uh, uh, turning to resistance. So this level is really important and it's exactly where they're battling as we speak. So it's not until they break that 5250 area that I know that if they do, it's highly probable they will try to go and test the turn point or point of control of transition for those of you trading order flow in this region of the 7325, 8075 and 8450. Please notice, notice that the, the decimal points are not exact, round them up as you see it fit because I did, we didn't have the time to do so. <clears throat> okay, so a break above that 40, the 5350 could trigger the 7325, the 80, 75, and 8425 or 8450. Okay, so this is the outlook as, uh, as we speak once again, even though that the main trend for me is bearish at this point, I understand based on the price structure and price action and slightly momentum reading, we'll, we'll take a closer look at the momentum reading if, if, to see if we're right or, or not. It's telling me that these guys are more into a uh, corrective mode in, and can go a little bit higher and try to correct even further more based on the price structure for the uh, uh, medium long-term to the short-term bias tendency, <clears throat> okay? Um, so now we go and assess the following. We go into the tool, excuse me. <clears throat> and I notice here on, um, I will, as I go along, I will probably explain it, but uh, for the indices, I'm, I'm more in, uh, inclined to read, um, call it the M15 level. And basically I wanna see this levels far beyond the 120, 115%, 120. And obviously all of this are beyond that level as we speak. Uh, the lower time frames here, uh, which are comprised with the M1, M5, I like to see each one of these uh, above the, the top side M1, above at least 200 positive, uh, the, the number, the percentage inside, and the percentage inside on the M M5 to be at least 115, 150. I'm sorry, 150 or more, okay? So since none of these, it's actually uh, applicable at this point, it's just su suggesting me focus on buy, set up buy, set up only, but there is no commitment of short-term traders behind it yet, okay? This is how, this is the, the reason or the way that we read it. Do not start asking because I don't have the time right now. Let me finish and then I will explain in details. I know this kind of tools tend to excite a lot of traders because that's how we are. We like the shiny object and uh, forget about the most important things, which is price section reading and the main trend analysis. Please don't, and don't take this personal. I want to take you as you like if you were one of my uh, mentorship program students or something like that, right? And you can, t you know, many of them who are here, they can testify that even though that they act, they have access, lifetime access to the tool, I do not provide this tool until they're done providing me a detailed pre-market analysis just by looking or reading the charts, just so you know. 
The most important thing is a price section, and then this tool comes number two, or even number three, as a final confirmation, right, that your analysis is spot on. Agreed, understood, yes. Make sense? <clears throat> <clears throat> Very important. The tools should not be the number one decision maker. Should be your last confirmation bias on your trading or uh, arsenal of, of techniques that you use. All right. So once again, um, just by glancing at the long term perspective for here for the indices, which is in F fifty, is, is it above one hundred and twenty? Yes, it is. And that means that it's green on the positive side. It's not, it doesn't have a negative sign on it. So this means focus only on buy setup, buy setups only. You can see it right here as well individually. So the only thing that I need to focus at this point is go long, go long only, look for buy opportunities. And if they do, now we, we, we can apply the analysis that we talked about. In other words, it says go long, right? or look for buy set of buy set of only. all we need to do is wait for the lower time frames and one in five to follow along suit which represents the speculators the majority of the intent of the speculators where the floating orders the tick counts the volume the order flow everything just line up and start indicating that they sh they are starting to join the party into the long side and from that point on you can start looking for opportunities based on your trading style, your techniques, and your execution techniques or triggering, so to speak, in your trading to the upper side. And right now, right off the bat, I can see here, very simple, that I should focus only on buy set of buy set of only. I'll have to wait until this guy settle in and join the party to the upside. Then I will start looking for an opportunity to go long. I like to break, wait for the market to break above the no trade zone, like I got it right here labeled for you. So this means that I'm going to go long. I'm going to wait until 5, 65.05.25 is broken to the upper side. I'm going to make sure that the long, short-term traders are joining in by waiting until the numbers inside, the momentum to indicate the threshold that we just gave you. It took us three years to come up with those numbers by the way so once again that's the reason i'm not i'm not, i'm saying don't ask just follow along and study it as the market goes along so once these two guys breaks above 200 on the m1 150 at least on the m5 and this sustain itself above 120 this means there is a confirming momentum upward bullish uh tendency everything is aligned and i can break above that 550 as a layer of confirmation and i can join the party the whatever's left at that point is number two is the second part of the the third part of the equation i'm sorry it would be once i have the entry whatever it is that you're looking for to go along uh to place my stop or trade my stop we can't help you there once again because i'm a i'm more of a swing trader if, if one of the logics that we use is as a position trader or swing trader, if I'm going long in here, for me, it will make sense to place my stop on the other side of the ledger. Does that make sense? Because if this is an unbiased market and it has been proven in here based on price action structure that they are having a lot of issues breaking through those levels. And this guy is suggesting a long-term Pacific strong bullish outlook. And then this guy has joined the party and confirmed that the trend is indeed intact because they're joining the party to the upside. And then they broke outside the two important resistance levels that they have proven on the overnight session to hold the market. So they broke all those barriers to the upside. It just makes sense that the next upcoming move is going to be to move on the to the other levels that we have calculated for you that's how it works so then i will place myself on the other side of the ledger and let the thing work but wait a minute if i go long here on this stop oh my god this is way too much it's impossible that's ridiculous it, they're ridiculous for a day trader i understand that i'm just explaining to you how we play things 
So you adapt your style of trading of the information that we're providing to you. This is pure price action analysis. This is not something that we're coming up out of the thin air. And it will take a little time and, uh, and, and, and um, um, how do you call this? Uh, <clears throat> it's going to take a lot of, a, a little bit of, a, of, um, of time until you see it over and over and over again. So you can start creating this sense of, 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 of commitment, right? Or this sense of comfort of saying, now I get it. So every time that this, all of this lines up, and everything that every time that we see that this breaks the white whatever to the upside it has a x percentage of success rate that it will sustain the trend than getting back down and stop those out and then you build your own uh confident level into the readings of the patterns and levels and the momentum and all that stuff does that make sense so far yes right so i'm trying to adapt a long-term perspective or swing trading concept into day trading, which requires for you to stop for a moment. <clears throat> what you, whatever you've been doing up until this point, if it is, if this was what I just explained to you, had doesn't align with your style of trading, do not put a buster sign in it. Don't do it, please. Just sit down, be open, be humble, which is really difficult for traders. Actually, a lot of people, a lot of students, when I said be humble, be humble about going back to basics, they, they get kind of, um, you know, annoyed, right, or whatever, you know, be humble, that's it, all right, fine, let's just assume that I don't, I, I don't know anything, let me, let me learn something new, okay, so, and I'm not saying that we're the best, because we're not, we're just really good analysts, and we're trying to share with you how things look for the bigger time frame and how we actually provide this level of information to our, you know, uh, you know, long term clients. This is what they paid us for every single month. <clears throat> OK, and it works. Sometimes we don't even know why it works. I, we all the only thing that I know is that it works. <laughs> so really interesting stuff. So on the NQ, a break above the 525 uh, could trigger 2225, <clears throat> excuse me, 2250. No, in this case, lower one, 25, 81.25 and 98, round it out to even, okay? On the break down of the 40.25, if the market breaks below that no trade zone, it means that it will probably go into a bigger corrective mode. And if I, now that I'm on the NQ here, I notice a huge corrective mode, which is in favor of the big time frame that I looked at, that I looked for, like daily chart. And I notice that this guy's made a correction, right? This could be the end of the correction, or maybe not. It's suggesting that it's not there yet. It's suggesting that the big time frame bias is still bullish, but I notice that the speculators are not backing it up at this point, which brings me a quick a big question, why they haven't broke above those level. It could be the fact that maybe they're done on the pullback. You see the mindset now, right? <clears throat> So how do we play this? Well, for me to play it safer, I would like to see for the market to break that 40-50 area, 40-25 area. And if they do, they're most likely are going to test a 40, 64-23, 50, 64-12-75, 88-75 area and 73 even area. It's a highly probability that the market is going to test either one of these levels. And if they continue down, right, how can we know these levels are going to be reached? You might have an idea right by now. How can we make sure that most likely the market will continue to push this? Why? Because this guy will turn itself into pass beyond the negative 110, 120% negative, like this negative on the top side. This guy is going to be way over 
the hundred and uh, the two hundred percent negative, and this guy will be way over the hundred and fifty percent negative, which indicates everything is pushing further down. Understanding the fact that if they continue, these guys are most likely to be reached. It depends on how you're going to trail your stops, what type of size of positions you have. You can liquidate some of your positions in the first layers and trail the remaining ones. You create your own trading style as your heart's desire. We just bring the tools to give you some confidence of how far will they go towards those levels. At this point, by looking at this, <coughs> excuse me, at looking at the momentum readings, can anybody shine in and say, what would be the decision at this point? What is the decision at this point? Should we go, should we buy now? Should we sell now? What it's saying? <coughs> <clears throat> All right, excuse me, I got I had to cough. Yes, exactly. Uh, do nothing. See, thank you, Ivan, Mark. Wait for everything to line up. There you go. So this is going to force you, guys, this will guarantee that what we're providing to you right now is going to force you to become disciplined in your trading, right? There's no other way around it. There's no way to hide from it. it. It is what it is, okay? And it will help you tremendously enhance whatever it is that you're using right now for your trading, all right? So the same thing will apply that I just did or explained on the e, e mini NASDAQ is the same thing on the ES, right? We just said that. <clears throat> Break above that 53.50 could possibly push things towards the 73, 80, 80, 80, 80 um, 75. Let me change I always like to go on the lower tick from from the bullish standpoint. If this says 73, I like to aim for 72, 75, and so on. One tick in my favor, right? Think of it when you when you're trading. If the level says um, 37, 80, uh, 3775, I'm just explaining 3775, right? I like to round it up to 38. Don't get greedy. Get Go for the for sure thing. doesn't matter if you give away one point, two ticks, one tick, or whatever. Just give it away. Okay? <clears throat> I'm also going to apologize because I know uh, I, don't, I sound funny today. <clears throat> um, same thing will apply on the YM. A break above 584 will trigger 700 and 826, 989, <clears throat> 25, 25 even. Long-term perspective bearish. Since this guy has provided a huge correction, we got the medium long and the short-term bias. <clears throat> Bullish at this point, if we go for the readings on YM, buy setups, buy setups only. And it seems like buyers are step are starting to agree with that outlook. So basically we're predicting 
the move on the short term period of time on the NQ, on the A mini SP, on the YM to be bullish based on momentum's reading on the way that we created this. Actually, we did not create it, we helped design it. By the way, no, I don't want to take credit for something that I didn't. This is an amazing, an amazing piece of work from one of our colleagues. And we just created a couple of uh, extra stuff to work to work in the way that we like to use it, which makes it exclusive and is not for sale, by the way. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> OK, so indices bullish uh, tendency. Let's see gold on gold. I noticed here that is on bias. It's mixed. There is no tendency. I like to see the one hour on the 110, 120% negative. And it's completely non-trending. There's no commitment, okay? Starting to see kind of a interesting bearish format, but it looks like they might be, uh, by the readings of this, it seems to be that this guy's might be on a, transition point it kind of makes sense <clears throat> market was bursting earlier this uh, overnight into the upper ground and it kind of failed to continue so it seems to be kind of a corrective mode that might look into the bearish sides if I go into long-term perspective very uh, tendency it's clear at this point that the market I'm gonna mark the importance right of the extremes there's one here we connect the dots we clearly see here wait here's another one another one <clears throat> we find ourselves into this comes from this area into a very bearish price action tendency okay so i'm just assuming a couple of waves here let me go back, see if we can find some clarity into this. All right, so we can say this low right here, 1329 is an important low. 1329 was taken in here. So since that was an important swing low, right there uh, on the on the previous uh, price section in history I will start counting waves from that breakthrough which is this swing low is an important one so I'm gonna start counting waves there <clears throat> so I would say this is a wave one two I would, uh, based on the length of this wave, this might end here. Three, kind of makes sense now. A, B, C pattern, four. And it seems to me a potential bearish outlook on the long-term perspective tendency, right? The way that I'm counting it right now. I, I don't like to rely on this 100%. I just want to make sure if I am on a corrective mode or if I am on a... Uh, impulse move so big swings here are impulse move making this wave one I, correction it's obvious this is a correction could be a wave two swing down three and this is a correction four with a fail to take the fifth wave down the, the neighbor completed it so it means this could be an extended wave four this high never pierced through the previous swing high here on the wave two making still an extended wave four and this could be the beginning stages of a big move down and if that's the case i know this is the length that they are typically trying to look go for based on price symmetry right which means that if i take the ruler and i measure 26 20 should be similar 25 absolutely similar i might expect another potential move of about 20 something 
there you go, around a potential level of floating orders between the 1304.50, 1303.40, which is a perfect alignment of the prior, prior price action structure. So we have more or less something similar. And as a matter of fact, we had it as a, we, we call this a power zone. Power zone is when we encountered a lot of floating orders and smart money floating orders or smart money interest, because I have access on Skype to one of, one, uh, one of my mentors, which is a hedge fund. And those are levels that they are interested in. I have no idea if they want to sell there or buy there. Well, I wish I knew. But all I know, if they are interested, there is a high probability that the market sustain a trend on the bearish side, they were going to try to push it there, obviously. That's at least what we believe in. <clears throat> so based on price symmetry, we encounter the probability for the market to go down. The only thing that is left at this point is, will they go down? Are they going down? We're based on price action. It looks like it. And all, need, all I need to know is if the momentum is getting there. And take a closer look at gold right now, turning pink to red. Now these guys are turning into a potential sellers. Is a highly probability that the market will most likely break through on the way down. I'm going to put it right in there. And we're doing this way before it happens, just so you can see the power of it. You can see the force or commitment strengthening into the sell side, into the bearish side. M1 is, uh, is 200. This is on 150. I just need to make sure that the M60 at this point, the, on, on the current, on the commodity side of things, I like to use the M M60, not M15. So if this guy's turned itself into 110% negative, it means that it's a confirming trend tendency. But just at the beginning stages, I know that it's validating the analysis on the lower time things. And most likely the next level down, they already took that 1980. It's highly probable the 1690, 1360, 1308, 1308, 80. And this is what I'm trying to aim for today, for 50 and 340. We'll take a closer look as the day goes by. I might be wrong, but you know it would be advisable to wait for the break of 1690 to confirm the tendency and join the party to all the way down. And we have one, two, three targets down that we can capitalize on. We'll, we'll take a closer look at that later on. Okay. And long and behold, the CL, <clears throat> let me go to a 30 minute chart. All right, price action structure on the price action structure on the 30 minute chart is on the way down. Right? So it's bearish. Right? We got that already. Market is on a pullback. Right? And it seems to me that the market is at this point a little bit unbiased. Okay? I can see no commitment whatsoever other than the fact that the long-term perspective that I'm looking for is slightly bearish. It's not until this guy bursts itself above the plus 120. It's actually 115-ish, 120, whatever that is. You know, it's not set in stone. I just want to make sure that they're above 115 to 120. That That's when we see the threshold to be a little bit more consistent. Once I see this, a negative 115, 120, and this guy's joining the party on 200%, 100% negative as well, then I know for a fact that this guy's are joining the party on the way down. And then if that's the case, since I notice this is a slightly bull bearish, I, I'm going to make myself more um, susceptible to look for sell setup at this point. Not, not a definitive, but most likely. So I can start approaching the market using my techniques, my approach, my entry setups, and whatever it is that you use towards that direction, <clears throat> okay?
So far, so good. So a break below that 59.79 could trigger 49. And there's a purple level. What is a purple? You see, there's one here. There's another one that right up there. And there's another one right there. They're rarely... We rarely see many of them close together when we see them separately. It means that there is a, a lot of pressure of sellers on those layers right there. A lot of buyers in here. A lot of sellers right in here. So in other words, if the market continuum breaks above that 60, 67, and this confirms it, and the short-term bias confirms it of the sentiment, right? Speculators. A breakup of that 67 could trigger the market to reach 6103. 6022, 6133, 6150, 6022 being part of the 2080 rule, which represents something that we learned from one of my uh, mentors, which says that the smart money tend to stop the market or bring the market to the 80-20 levels. Don't know why I asked, but the answer was not as spectacular as I thought it would. <clears throat> so in order for you to provide the what I'm talking about, if you see, let me do it this way, see how powerful those levels are. We can see here, you see the swing low right there, kind of the 6120 level area. You were probably going to see here 80, 6180 is right in there. And this is pretty much the market went down and stopped right there. And it starts sideways between the 8020 rule area until they broke through it. Is a highly probability that a market market will encounter another support on another 80 or 20 level area. 80 being this support here, and take a closer look. The market went a little bit further through it, but it bounced from it. This double top high right there at the 77, really close to that 80 level. It might, I might say so. By a couple of ticks. And look where the market stopped on a dime on the overnight session of 430 at 6083. And you're starting to see the pattern. Yes or no? All right. You see the low right here of the overnight session. Look where it is. At the 80 to 77 area. Powerful stuff. At least you know that if you're in a position and you're approaching your 10, 15, 20 ticks away from an 80 or 20 level, and you do have confirmation, right? Or your gut feeling is telling you that the market it will sustain that trend. It will be a highly probability that it's going to reach it and bounce from it. Paul, at least, uh, yeah, <clears throat> on the indices, I think I will have to go back and dig in because the indices I mean, on the CL is applicable because there is a 100 pointer from 120 to another. So I know those are the ones because my mentor was trading the crude oil and, and the Brent natural gas and all that stuff, and they use it in those. So it looks like it's applicable for the energy market. Other than that, I can't say I have no idea. Only that it works. <clears throat> All right, so and lastly, you see the 5880. That was actually a point of control right in there on the swing low. So once again, pretty pretty staggering number. The 80 at least, at least is a really, really good one. All right, long-term perspective bearish. I just need some confirmation of the momentum of it. In other words, if we try to force ourselves or if your system provides you with a an entry point right now as we speak, it will highly, it will most likely be an early stage entry. You're probably gonna encounter a little bit of a whipsaw. 
you're probably going to encounter a delayed process into the move until the momentum start lining up. Short term, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the short term uh, traders or speculators needs to match the main trend outlook, which is still slightly bearish. The way that I'm reading this is we are on a downtrend, <coughs> excuse me, on a corrective mode. We are on a downtrend on a corrective mode. Standing by, no trades. <coughs> I hope this morning has brought you some clarity in at least the way that we're presenting things. There's not much happening. So the next thing that we do, we need to then move on into understanding what we have today <clears throat> that might fuel the market. So for that, we bring the calendar and long and behold, the reason the market is behaving the way that it is, you can see it right there. I mean, in here, you go Monday, there's nothing happening. There's no report, no high input report, which is the one that I've been trying to go for. So maybe you want to, uh, there's no medium input report. There's no high input report. Those are the ones that I'm more interested in. There's nothing happening today, which is we are at the mercy of the market. And most likely these will react on their respective opening times. If you know the profile of the market, then you will understand what I'm talking about, which means what are the times that, the, uh, that this particular instrument start uh, transacting for the open outcry, which means 9.30 for the indices, about 9 o'clock for the CL. <clears throat> Paul, yes, average true range is really good. I got it on the bottom here on CL, which is one that I like to go for. Okay. <clears throat> On a 10 minute chart is moving out an average of 12 ticks. You can use that as your first gauge of potential profit objective taking. Okay. Thank you, Sven. Thank you, Paul. So yes, uh, average through range is important. Let me add this one up in here. <clears throat> Let me use this. All right, so we have, today we got about nine points on the 10 minute mark on the on the e -mini NASDAQ, nine pointer. So that's a nasty point number, right? Because we also use the ATR and I like to multiply that by, you know, 1.4 as a, as a formula that I like to use as a stop loss and average stop. So so I need to encounter a 12 pointer on a 10 minute chart on NQ as a potential stop loss, right? 12 ticks on the CL. We're talking about about 17 to 18 stop minimum based on the ranges that they are uh, applying that's that's for the minimum and here you can say but 12 full point stop on the nq is hardcore which means as the market is extremely volatile right for our taste this is kind of not for everybody is um it's quite daunting right <clears throat> what? 
So we do nothing, we stand, stand by because everything is mixed at this point, with the exception of the indices that are bu slightly bullish in terms of long-term momentum. We just need to make sure that the speculators join them in. Nothing happening at this point. And there's nothing feeling the market. There's no high input report, which means also that we're at the mercy of the opening of the um, of the stock market, which brings also the range timing sequence, which is 9.30 open and give it about 15 to 20 minutes to do its thing. And then the market will show you its true tendency. The cool thing is that with this tool, you most likely will have an idea, most likely where that, uh, uh, that tool might, 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 you know, might be inclined to go towards to. <clears throat> Okay. You see the NQ turning very positive, looking for buy setup, buy setup only. Same thing applied on the YM, same thing applied on the ES. And I see the gold uh, slowly and steady, as we said, going into the sell side. And most likely the next level down would be 13, 16, 90, which is still inside the no trade zone. But I'm just trying to show you the levels. So that's one thing. So you can see the power of each one of those. And then you're going to witness today the power of, of uh, forecasting with this uh, amazing momentum reading uh, uh, te uh, technology that we've been able to develop through the years. All right, so I'm standing by, no more trades. Obviously, we're, there's nothing happening. <clears throat> I'm not, I'm gonna stop rambling at this point. There's no other, nothing else for me to say. Hope so far that you enjoyed it. And let me just put here a standby, right? For trades. I put it somewhere in here. You know what, I'm gonna put it in here. Wait, I can probably do this. There you go. So you know exactly what each one of those means. And we're good. All right, I'm going to mute myself. And <clears throat> I'm going to take some medicine. Be right back.
So Ricardo said you sent her a trade accidentally on the account. Yeah, I know it is. Don't worry. It's all good. <clears throat> All right, MQ on the moves. Let me go ahead and explain to you the re, the, the outlook on the MQ. One, it was the MQ and YM and ES, the the one that we were uh, explaining. So, <sighs> wow, sorry guys, I can't breathe. So, anyways, we have here. <clears throat> <clears throat> Let me just go into the left side. If we go to the left side, we notice how commitment of traders just jump in on the lower time of the ledger. So speculators are selling off, right? Which goes in sync of the price action structure since we never broke above the no trade zone. The, the, the concept of the no trades on not being able to break through it so far <clears throat> is backing up uh, the main trend analysis. Agreed, everybody?
All right, guys, we pay attention to the CL, CL already on the M60 put itself on the top side of the 115, 120 negative. So that looks pretty decent. <clears throat> well, let me know when you see confirmation, please. Just missing one more confirmation on oil. The indices are almost there. I'm just missing <clears throat> the full trend confirmation here, not there yet. Now oil is already confirming sell, set up, sell, set up only. And so far we got initial uh, commitment of trader behind it. We just need to make sure that this guy zooms in so we can just swing for longer, uh, longer time longer uh, perspectives. there we need a hundred fifteen hundred and twenty-ish on the M15 <coughs> excuse me I know that is annoying so I apologize All right, so now we see everything looking pretty decent on the negative side. Um, everything is kind of aligned with what we're looking for. Away for a pullback now, <clears throat> and it's nine o'clock. Obviously, the opening of the of the crude oil. Gold turning into unbiased tendency, so there's nothing on gold. You can see here how sellers stepping in, very committed into the sell side of things on the NQYMES. Pretty decent stuff. Notice here how. 
Uh, buyers are stepping in on gold as the markets start moving. This is going to open up your eyes in many different ways. <clears throat> I'm going to use a pulling bar technique on five minutes, waiting for... Uh, I don't know how far that will go, but possibly something like so, and possibly coming back down, which I doubt, um, quite honestly. <clears throat> But it could be, yeah, we'll wait.
All right, guys, so <clears throat> YM sitting on the bottom side of the no trade zone. <clears throat> he has on the way down. Go seems to be turning into the bullish side of things. YM breaking below. You can see YM, M15, check, upper 120. Yes, going south, next over down 205. <clears throat> Same thing will apply on the ES, broke below the no trade zone, confirmed, next over down 2750. Same thing will apply on the NQ, on the way down 425. You can see everything is confirmed. CL towards the Twenty-seven fifty on the E mini S and P. Fifteen minutes for the nine thirty mark. I like to, you know, consider any trades on the indices right after nine thirty plus twenty minutes of threshold. Uh, Stephen, is it applicable for forex market? Um, <clears throat> yes, Stephen. It's just that we don't trade currencies here. Right, CL officially sell setup, sell setups only. You can see it right there. So we wait for the break of the no trade zone, hopefully a pullback, and then retake of that. Targets are going to be 59.49, 59.13, and 58.67. I would rather stay on the sidelines. I quite honestly, I don't feel well today. <clears throat> so apologize for that. Um, I'm going to just walk you through the process and how we read the th things and how each level is being developed so you can compare with your own stuff. Paul is asking what is the reason the notation is as wide as it is. It's all across the indices, Paul, because of the volatility of the market is too big. <clears throat> Okay. No, no, no issues. Guys, I, I have to mute myself from time to time. I don't want you to start, you know, listening to listening to me while I'm coughing and stuff like that. Okay.
my guys. So notice here, I'm going to find me waiting for a decent pullback, which might not happen. You can see here the commitment of traders, obviously backing it up. So sellers are, uh, speculators are backing the main trend down. Sell setups, sell setups only, focus on sell setups. The break below that 59.80, remember the 80-20 rule. Could dictate the test of the 59.50, <clears throat> 59 58, 68 area. All right. See so this guy's provide a pullback and then a continuation down. Then whatever they left behind could be. Use as a potential stop loss placement. <clears throat> as long as this guy sustains itself on the negative side, uh, we should focus on sell setups only. Uh, price action momentum is backing things up right now, so all good. <clears throat> the same thing is applied on the e, on the indices, right? So as you can see, the pre-market analysis really important we overseeing the the fact of the failure of a potential pullback the reason why the potential continuation of a main bigger uh, downturn was uh, most likely expected based on price section early win patterns then we move into the short term period of, uh, of, of short period of time frames where we created um, the, the no trade zone right take a closer look how it's stuck right at the end of it <clears throat> And by the time these guys are aligning into the process of the main trend, <clears throat> 9.30 is coming up. So I like to give it a 9.30 plus about 20 uh, minute of threshold. <clears throat> and so far, the only one who has reached the first layer beyond the no trade zone is the, the ES, the YM missed about a couple of uh, ticks or points, I guess. And gold is on bias, okay? No trade or no tendency. You can see here how the indices just came back into on bias territory. Sell set up, sell set up, only on bias territory, on bias territory, no trades. <clears throat> Here comes the CL lining up. I think these guys are going to continue without pulling back. I'm not following through once again. Just going to show you the trade today.
All right, guys, 9.30 is here. Let's just uh, pay attention right here. Now, you're going to wait about, I would say, anywhere from 15. So people wait a couple of minutes, three or four, for the opening range, other 30 full minutes, other five minutes. Just, I mean, quite honestly, uh, I'll... I'll consider typically about 10, 15 minutes the average. <clears throat> and 15, on the end, this is taking the bull side of things. Obviously, this is what counts because 9.30 is here. And uh, we'll pay attention to it. Notice how the CL just plain and simple is sustaining itself, relaxed, steady. <clears throat> now here comes the pullback. <clears throat> now we wait. All right, guys, nothing's happening right now. Pull back here.
just to see the price structure of it. <clears throat> and we clearly see how the momentum has died out on the long-term perspective below the 115, 120. So no trades whatsoever. If these guys want to reverse, I would like to see the break of the 44, 55, and 67 backed up by M60 above 110. Same thing will apply on the <coughs> indices. <coughs> Excuse me. You notice here how these things are reverting. We got M15 above 115, 120. Yes, so that's a buy, uh, buy tendency or bullish tendency as we speak. We just need to make sure that the lower time frames back it, back it up, which are not there yet. It's quite mixed. Makes sense because the market just opened. So we just stand by. <coughs>
Guys, and Q, I gotta buy sick and buy setup. Uh, as you can see, everything back up by the momentum tool. So this is the entry of five, 0550. Next target, <clears throat> Sorry guys. <clears throat> yeah, um thank you one <clears throat> following through. Yes, indeed. Um take a closer look at the momentum behind it. 200, 200, over 200, 300 percent focus on buy set up, buy set up only 50 minutes are almost passed. As I said, after 9:30, give it about 10, 50 minutes, we'll give you the clarity of the intentions. A break above 65. 0525 next level 2220 2225 the commitment of traders are behind it <clears throat> so the way that you got to pay attention to is the following buy set up buy set up only and buyers and speculators are backing it up okay <clears throat> next level up 2225 i'm not trading it <clears throat> i don't feel quite well to focus at this point so i'm, I'm being your analyst today Unbiased market back again here on this CL. There is no follow through, although it's still slightly negative. So this is a no trade yet. <clears throat> um, gold at this point, it's slightly turning into the buy side of things. Uh, obviously, speculators are backing it up, but there's no big commitment yet. I need this to be plus 120-ish to be absolutely on the upside. So indices, buy, set up, buy, set up only. Commitment of traders backing it up. Just a matter of waiting. Is it a 100% guaranteed? No, but at least it gives you some clarity of what exactly to expect. Next level up on the MQ, 2225. One, do you have any target if possible between the 2225 and 65.8? <clears throat> e mini s p retaking for the third time the top of the ledger of the no trade zone it's still backed up as a potential buying buy side <clears throat> so if they sustain it they will probably going to stay on it next level low it's going to be the 73 and 80 75. ym following through <clears throat> next level up 534, we can see it here bullish any moment now. 584 and then 700. About to, about to hit the target on the NQ. And this is not shabby, guys. This is not shabby. And we're talking about a decent 16 full point on the NQ on the upper side. Agreed? I canceled the sell limit. Uh, Paul, I didn't took the, the trade. <clears throat> Mike, the arrows are an average of time frames. It's not set in one. It's, uh, it's an average, each one of those. <clears throat> Four points on the ES for Peter. Great job, Peter. Fifteen minutes into the nine thirty open, taking a quick look at M fifteen level on the indices. It's slightly bullish. As long as they sustain themselves above and beyond one twenty or around that level, we should be consider ourselves buyers on the indices. Okay, are you with me? It's up to you to use your techniques and awesome systems whichever are those and execute in just that direction or if you have also a trend a tendency confirmation technique or tool you should be back at it backing it up with this okay <clears throat> so i got 30 i got 35.50 green thank you 
Thank you. That's another target. Let me set it up. <clears throat> All right. So that looks good, though. <clears throat> I got 65, 65, blue. Thank you. 65. 65, what? 65, 65. Thank you. Perfect. All right. Perfect. New levels popping up. <clears throat> buy set of buy set of only on the NQ. Next level up 2225, 3550. Nothing has changed, and the NQ is the only one with the biggest strength so far. Let's see if it's sustained. <clears throat> 10 o'clock reversal might change things here and there, becoming. Uh, this kind of the uh, potential fake out move. So let's see. And the other thing that I wanted to share is that, <coughs> excuse me, you got to aim for a specific set of goals. I don't know which one, which one are those, but for us, we like to aim for four to six full points on the NQ each time that we trade and hold one position for the long, long trend and locking one or two ticks once we reach our four or to five full points on the NQ. So if that would be the case, it means the following. It means that in this instance, we probably would have reached our target and we already are out on a one or two tick trading back, right? <clears throat> then I would wait, I would wait for a five minute pulling bar technique, assuming that it will sustain a <clears throat> bullish outlook. You can see here buy set up buy set up only M15 on the MQ. So let's see. Hopefully this bar pulls back down furthermore giving me kind of a two-step pulling bar entry that i'm looking for which looks something like this hopefully and then if the market breaks above and that area right there that would be my buy this would be my stop and i would aim for the same levels that haven't been reached <clears throat> Gold turning into the positive side, 130, the yeah, M15, buy setup, buy setup only on gold. Remove this on the side. Uh, let me refresh this guy, new script. Where are the, oh, there you go. Market makes long to perspective bearish, short term buy is bullish. Uh, momentum reading is focused on the buy side of the ledger. Quite mixed market today. Pulling bar technique on the on the goal, I mean on oil, came right at the low part of 60.22 on the sell side of things. <clears throat> okay, so let's see. There it goes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Pulling bar technique on the CL, once again, for the founding members, you know exactly what we're looking for. So first pullback, second bar, third bar meeting the higher high. That line represented the exact pulling bar entry technique, targeting 59.49, 59.13, and 58.67. <clears throat> Interesting. Still inside the no trade zone. Great entry, uh, Kevin, using the pulling bar entry at 6020. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, by glancing here, um, CL focus on cell setup, cell setup only. <clears throat> Indices just died out on the top side of the ledger, which means there's no from the speculators behind it. And the momentum just dried out. This could be pretty much a 10 o'clock reversal. We'll see about that. Market is back inside the no trade zone. A break below 40.25 will trigger 23.75, 13, and 87. Guys, I don't want to be rude or anything like that. That's the least point that I want to go through. Questions directly to me personally, that it, tell, it tells me once again that you haven't done your homework in terms of the market. And what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to become a coach at this point and ask you, and I'm just going to put you in the line. If you don't know the answer to the questions that I'm going to uh, go through next, it means that you are most likely treating uh, trading as a gambling opportunity versus a business. Understood. So my question to you for the NQ, my question to you for the CL, every time that you make a decision to place a trade, what is the minimum average point or 
takes that you should you expect from your entry on the CL or in the, in the NQ based on the profiling of the market that you understand. In other words, by understanding, if you have done your due diligence and understand how the market moves on average every single day, every time that you place a trade, how many minimum ticks or points of move on the NQ and CL you expect. So that leads that what you, that's what you're aiming for on every decision that you place that you take on placing a trade. If you care to <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me, if you answer that correctly or at least have an answer that makes sense, you have done your due diligence. If you're not, then the questions that you're asking me, I will not, you know, pretty much answer those. <clears throat> That's way past beyond the point of today's uh, presentation. <clears throat> <clears throat> there you go. Kevin has a 1.4 times ATR. That's good, Kevin. If you use that, uh, 10 to 20 ticks on trading on the, on the trade plan of burial. All right. There you go. Ted G12. There you go. Those are very specific answers, which is awesome, by the way. Twelve. <clears throat> 268 people and only one, two, three, four answers. All right, said enough. Ten o'clock is here. Thank you, Eva. See you, Barry. Good job. <clears throat>
NQ on the top side of the ledger of the no trade zone again. You can see here on the right side, it's buy set of buy set of only. M uh, small time frame is backing it up. Next level up 6225, 35, 50, 65. <clears throat> Nothing on the CL, completely dead, standing outside.
All right, guys. So, so far, <clears throat> let's take a closer look here. Negative grounds after the 10 o'clock reversal. ES on the lead by uh, M15 being above 110, 115. There it is. Backed up by the speculators. So there you go. They broke outside the no trade zone again. Second time. About to hit the <clears throat> 2750, then 2350, and 2025. <clears throat> the rest of the indices following through. So 10 o'clock reversal spot on. I'm gonna five minute, 19 tick, I mean 19 points, right? On the ATR, not for the faint of heart. Extremely volatile markets. Guys, this is a five minute chart, is a 58 points pullback, 77 points because we got to label at points, not ticks. <clears throat> Kelly, you got it. No trend day so far. Absolutely. You got it. <clears throat> There's no validations on the long-term perspective with the short-term bias being changing back and forth. And it goes in sync with the no trade zone regions as well. So you see, there's no shame of, you know, sometimes saying, hey, there's no trade. There's no trend. So standing outside sometimes is the best solution. <clears throat> which is one of the most difficult um, decisions the usually the traders do because, you know, we as traders try, try to battle within ourselves and others. It's always a competition. It's kind of quite a stupid mindset. This is not a competition. It's either make money or, or, you know, or not make money. This is not a showcase or a battle of the gurus or nothing like that. You know, there's no shame sometimes to say, I don't feel comfortable, no trades, period. Simple as that. But I know, you know, the ego sometimes is like the most powerful thing in trading. <clears throat> and you can tell if you're right or wrong based on your monthly returns, right? No trades. <clears throat> The mini S&P first target hit at 2750 earlier today, came back up, came back down. The first target on the bottom side of 2350 uh, reached. So 
So pay attention. There's a couple of things you got to pay attention. It's not only the levels, not, all, not only the no trade zone, it's the momentum bias reading uh, <clears throat> tool that we have. M15 over 200% on, M, I mean, M5 over 200%, M1 over 200, 300%, testing the lower end of the 40, 50 area. <clears throat> M15 breaking closer to the 100%. Dab it a couple of a couple of times, so it seems it's already 10:25. So 10 o'clock reversal is doing its thing. Next layer down, highly probable 23.50 or 24. Let me settle this correctly. 13. Eighty nine. <clears throat> Twenty five. I got the CL going through it for it. Can you double check on my end? All right, so let's see if we can get uh one tiny opportunity to go short. There it is. And we're going for, here we go, 59.70. And 60, 200%. Omega 6 is here. M5, 150. I mean, uh, M15, 150. M5 are 200%. <clears throat> sell setup sell setups only first target at the 49 one tick above 50 would be the best bet for me <clears throat> ym sell setup sell setups only break outside the no trade zone second time in a row next level down 24 20 next level down 23 uh, 24 on the enq Second and third target hit on the ES. Take a closer look here. The commitment behind it. We're battling the fifty nine sixty five area.
All right, guys, so we're just giving enough space and time. Lowering my stuff to 98. Right, tidying stuff to 96. Ninety five, ninety five stop. <clears throat> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Focus on sell, set up, sell, set up, sell only. Speculators backing the main trend down. Let's see the management or the stop pattern management is uh, applicable so far. I'm focusing on the stop loss now. The targets are the least of my focus because they're already calculated in here. So I don't know. I will either get stopped out or the market will reach the target.
The ATR on the CL is at 29 ticks on the 10 minute chart. 1.4 should be the average stop, but I can't allow that because that's way far more than my uh, daily allowance of, of about 30 ticks. The last pullback was 58. This uh, erratic move here was about 37 in sync with what I'm just mentioning right now. So right now I'm just uh, using the order flow and price structure transition to trail my stop and still give it enough space to do its thing. But by now they should have moved towards the target, not um, away from it. <clears throat> Based on the momentum reading, it's sell setup, sell setup. It's only long-term perspective, bearish outlook, but the market is extremely volatile and there's a lot of big whipsaws going on. 58 pullback, 37 pullback, and still being right on trend. So that means that unfortunately, if we're not allowed to take this kind of a pull of stop losses, then this is a market we should not be tempered with. I'm just following the system, break outside the no trade zone for the second time. I mean, not for the, yeah, let's see. Here's the first dip at three in the morning. Second one right there, which, which is a fake out at 940. Third time is a charm. And <clears throat> following through with the long-term perspective, let's see if they don't stop those out and still move in the same direction. But if not, I will assume I stop there and wait for another setup eventually. Um, later on, on my end, but uh, just following through with you and explaining how we read things. <clears throat> the market on the indices has died out. M15 has no momentum on the end. On, 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 they're not even beyond or below, right? positive or negative above 115. So that's the key there. There's no trade is dull on bias market on the indices. All right, we're out, 25 ticks, no more trades. <clears throat> average daily range, no, average through range on the 10 minute chart is 29 ticks. So we'll probably got stuck out and still gonna be right on trend eventually. So no more trades for me in there. standing by <clears throat> guys I'm gonna give it until 11 15 and then we're just gonna continue and let you go in terms of we're gonna keep the tool open and active for you guys all the way up until 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time so you can uh, play with it understand it and use it as your heart's content. Market is unbiased at this point. The only moves were uh, after the 10 o'clock reversal on the way down on the indices, and that was it. The only one sustaining a trend at this point is go uh, gold since the morning. <clears throat> you can see it right here in the bullish side of things. And uh, the CL, although really wacky, is really um, it's quite unbiased, so to speak, in terms of price structure, but the momentum is still sustaining a bearish outlook. We'll, we'll wait and see. All right, so I'm going to meet myself here for a while.
All right, guys, so it's 11.01, all right? So we're going to leave it up, up up until here, but you pretty much, we're going to keep it on the sidelines on chat, see? Uh, room is going to be open so you can use the tool and test it out basically by glancing at the tool. Uh, right off the bat, there's no commitment behind anything. The market is dull. Just This will, will give you the guidance in terms of what to expect from the movement. So far, I got a stop loss here on the CL, but the momentum is still, or the long-term per perspective, momentum still focused on sell, 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 but there's nothing behind it. So <clears throat> for those reasons, I'm going to step out, No, nothing more, and I'll see you tomorrow. Sounds good. Hope you learned and understood pretty much how we use the levels and the power of the zones itself. And through the remaining of the day, you're going to take a closer look at how the uh, momentum indicator wor works out and possibly uh, helps you in the decision making of your of your trading. I am certainly potentially looking for a sell setup on the CL eventually on the sidelines. I'm probably going to do so. If I do, I'll post it here on the chat seat box eventually. I break below 79 with everything lined up. I'll probably going to take another shot at it soon. All right. So I'm going to mute myself here. Nice seeing you. And uh, good luck with your trading. Keep, uh, keep just paying attention as I'm, once again, looking forward to a continuing downward move on CL and recover from the loss and possibly some profits. See you tomorrow. Bye.